First thing that comes to mind uh, when you think of Jermel Charlo. You earned it. You earned it. I'll say you earned it. Tim Zhu. Um, I'm proven. I'm proven. You have to prove yourself. Sebastian Fundura. First thing I think about him is big guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's tall. He looks like the 40 year old virgin, too. <laughs> right, right, right. He's like right. a substitute crazy, teacher. <laughs> he's like a mutant, like a mutant. They mutated him. And that's how you say the right word. <laughs> Erickson Lubin. He's a good fighter. Good fighter. Brian Castaño. Yeah, um, I like his style. He's, he's a. Uh, He's a gritty fighter, like tough fighter. Tony Harrison. He's also another good fighter. Entertaining as hell, too. I love Tony Harrison. Yeah, that guy's yeah. funny. Jarrett Hurd. I want my name back, Jarrett. <laughs> and, <you're laughs> <no more. laughs> and, and, and rounding it off, J Rock, Julian Williams. Oh, that's my guy, man. Great guy. Great guy. With this move to 154, Danny, uh, a lot of people are curious uh, about how your power is going to move up with these bigger guys uh, like Charlo and Fundora, Zhu, and, and, and these others. You know, how do you think your power is going to move up to 154? I think it feels, I feel stronger, to be honest. I'm hitting hard. So everything we're doing, I'm doing more conditioning, build more muscle, build more strength. Spill, spar bigger guys, so I'm preparing my body to fight um, bigger and stronger guys. It's all about the preparation, so that's, uh, that's all we're doing. How do you think those guys at 154 will be able to take your power? You know, we got to see. We got to see. I know I'm a big hitter, and no one likes to be hit by me, so no one stands in front of me, so we just got to see. And I think that's the part. I think, like, I think they're gonna be surprised. I think they, I think they're gonna be surprised how like this be strong I am. Mm. Because they think I'm a smaller guy from 140 to 147. They think I'm a nasty smaller guy, but they're gonna be a lot surprised of how much how strong I am, how much skills I have. I that's the part that interests me. Like I want to see like how they react to like getting hit by you because of like interviews that Thurman's done, Porter's done, where they've said like you're one of the hardest people they've ever been hit by. Yeah, definitely. So I, the power, I think power is something you're born with. Obviously, you got to learn how to turn your punches and then you got to add the science to it, you know, timing and all that stuff. But I definitely born with the power and we just perfected how to turn your punches and turn your waist and shift your body weight. Now, you're saying you you feel renewed. You have a lot more energy. You're in this new division that uh, you're not cutting as bad. I know with like the fights that were really close with you, um, and they could have gone either way with like Thurman and, and, and Porter uh, and Spence, who gave a good account of yourself too. But I, I think your dad asked you to uh, to throw a little bit more, and I think what was missing was just a little bit more activity from you. You think at yeah, one fifty four, now that you don't have to cut as bad, and that cut isn't as bad, you can be a little bit more active, and you'll have the energy to throw a little bit more in these fights. Exactly, um, you'd be able to dig deep, especially at the end of the fight. When you got that extra energy, it's a big difference. It's a big difference. When you had me killing yourself all week to make weight, and then you got less than 24 hours to rehydrate. And um, to be honest, I, I never, my body never really felt good at 147 from the first time I moved up. It just felt like it wasn't a, a comfortable weight for me. Like, I felt more comfortable making 140. Like, 147 didn't feel like a comfortable weight for me. So I think 154 is perfect for me. How so, Danny? How didn't it feel comfortable? It just didn't feel like my, it didn't feel comfortable to me. It wasn't a good way for me, I don't think, like for my body. Mm. How bad was the cut? It wasn't bad. It's just, I, I just can't explain it. I feel way better now. So I know the difference. I, I think I know what you're, you're referring to. It's just naturally, you just feel bouncy, like energy, like you, you can keep going exactly. and going. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. With a free VIP package to watch Canelo versus Triple G live in Las Vegas. Free tickets, free signed merch, free party at High Lounge, 
VIP access to the weigh-in. Big thanks to our buddies over at Stagefront for making this possible and partnering with us to go ahead and do this giveaway. You guys gotta check them out. They put together some really cool VIP packages for the fights. Marcos, how do I win this? Click on the link in the description on this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms. Winners are announced August 31st. Now get back to watching this video. In this new division, uh, you've stated your goal is to be a three division world champion. Uh, the king of the division right now is Jermel Charlo. When you look at Charlo, and I know you're not looking past Benavides, but when you just look at him, though, like how how beatable of a fighter do you see him as? You know, anybody can be beat. Anybody can be beat. He already has one loss and one draw, I believe. So, you know, anybody can be beat. And, and the right night, anybody can be beat. You've got to believe in yourself. As long as you believe in yourself, you can you can do anything you put your mind to. Hmm. I would be remiss uh, if the fan in me were to come out and say, like, how do you beat him, Danny? Or like, how are you sizing up? Like, how are you seeing yourself beating Charlo? Because if you win this, people are going to want to see you fight Charlo. Like, that's a huge fight. Yeah, definitely. We've got to go in there and find the way, like I always do. You know, um, there's really no secret. You got to go in there and dig deep and find a way and just fight hard and fight smart. And Try to win as much rounds as you can and land big punches. When I was doing prep work for you uh, last night, I just, I've had fun covering you, man. <laughs> like, honestly, yeah, like, it's been a hell of a ride. Energy. Yes. Yeah, you got some classic stuff, especially <laughs> with Angel. I think yeah. that's like the most, one of the most popular interviews you have, right? Oh, man. When I remember I saw you at the basketball game like a few months after, and I was like, you looked at me and you're like, oh, hey, you're the guy my dad yelled at. And I was just like, oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> but you're such, a, you're such a nice guy, Danny. You're like, oh, no, no, don't worry about it. I look at it and I laugh. Yeah, cracking that up. I still watch <laughs> it to this day. Do you really? No lie. Because, yeah. <laughs> he, he, you know, he was that serious, right? I thought your dad was going to deck me. Nah, nah, nah. Like, nah, like, the home, like the Homer Simpson choke, you know, when he does the Bart? Like, I thought he was going to yeah, do that yeah, to yeah. me. Nah, nah, nah. He was just <laughs> the media. He just couldn't understand how he couldn't understand how I was a unified champion and I was an underdog, and people thought I was gonna lose. So he was he was just hearing that all week, and you just it was bad timing for you. Well, yeah. bad and good. <laughs> I love your dad though, man. Your dad's such a. I think your dad's very misunderstood, and if you get a chance to actually talk to your dad and get to know him, like he's an extremely likable person. For sure, for sure. It's just. Tensions, the, the tensions are running high during fight week. Yeah, they are. And it's just like, it's do or die at this point. So people really don't understand that uh, your emotions are high and some people know how to control them. But I would imagine like he's your greatest weapon too. Like he, he brings you up for these things. Yeah, exactly. So it makes me uh, set my game up. <laughs> I got to back him up. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, you, you just finished a gym session or what? I'm on my way to the gym right now as we speak. That's why oh, yeah? I'm all dressed up, ready to work out. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I, I've been seeing a ton of interviews with you. Um, the, the energy, you seem happy. Yeah, definitely. I feel good. I feel great. I feel good to be back. No, I, I, I've been hearing a, a lot of the stuff of, um, I guess, you know, it, it seems to me like burnout. You, you're just extremely burnt out mentally uh, during the last, like, year and a half. Yeah, definitely. That's how I felt. I just felt like I needed some time to rest, recover, and I knew I'd, I'd be back stronger than ever. Yeah, yeah. You you did an interview with us in which you said that uh, you felt like you were like only fifteen percent of yourself in that Spence fight. Can you elaborate no, on I that? Like, no, I was more than that. I was more than that. Um, I would say physically, physically, I was good, but mentally, I, I wasn't. I wasn't all the way there. Like, I didn't feel good. But um, you know, no excuses. It was just something on my end you know that i had to get uh make correct and get better and i knew what it was because i've been boxing for a long time so i know what my body is saying you, you just need to take chill pill you need to relax so and that's what it was that's all it was just like anybody else who's been working for a long time they might get mentally tired they might not feel like doing it so that's how i felt yeah like were you just kind of going through the motions then not, not really motivated not really getting up for it or you just kind of like yeah yeah, that's, that's exactly how I felt. I felt like I just had to push myself every day. And I knew it was a big fight. And I knew I was fighting a dangerous opponent. 
So I knew that I still had to wake up and really put that work in. I knew I was fighting a big fight. I knew I was fighting a big fight. So I knew I was fighting Spence and the dangerous opponent. It was a big fight. So I knew I had to wake up every day and push myself. So I had to push myself way harder than I usually did because it was hard for me to be motivated. That's crazy, man. You would think like someone like an Errol Spence, given what was at stake down the line, like in terms of, of an undisputed fight with Crawford, that that would like, you know, yeah. get you motivated. But that, that goes to show yeah. you like how burnt out mentally you were. Yeah, exactly. So it was just like, it was just a bad time, bad time. I don't know what it was. Mm. We, I, I saw like an interview that uh, I, well, too, that uh, you mentioned and been having a lot of anxiety or you were having a lot of anxiety during that time too, right? Yeah, a bit. I think it was more that I was just mentally tired. So it was kind of like messing with my head. But um, I knew what it was. I knew what I was facing. I just knew I needed rest. I'm, I'm the only fighter who fought two times in 2020. And that was a crazy year. 2020 was a crazy year. So I worked hard two times and, and through the pandemic and everything. So I was a little bit, it was a little bit crazy for me. Yeah, you talk about crazy. You got bit by Ivan Redcatch. That was kind of oh, odd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was nuts. Bro, you and Evander Holyfield have something in common, but have you ever had a chance to talk to Ivan about that? Like, yo, bro, why'd you bite me? Uh, I think he DM'd me before. He DM'd <laughs> me before. He was like, he was like, yo, um... You tell New York to pay me. They they got my purse. Cause they they you saying I um you bit uh I bit you, and I was like, listen, I just say you bit me during the fight. I didn't I didn't do it to put them to take your purse away. Like that was crazy. So I had to tell um I had to tell my team this. It's all right. It's not that big of a deal. Pay him. So that that was kind of like the last conversation I ever had with him. A good man, Danny. You're a nice guy. Yeah, cause it's like. Because it's like, I know people got families to feed, so I'm not, I've been through worse than that, than a bite. You know, so I didn't, when I said I got bit, I was just saying, because, yo, he bit me, but I didn't say to take his money away. <laughs> yeah, New York's kind of strict with that kind of stuff, you know, so <laughs> it's just crazy to think that that ended up happening. Ivan's a crazy guy. Uh, you know, you look at like the Regis Prograce fight, he, he got hit with something, he went down, so... And if you met Ivan in person, he, he's a character. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm expecting the best, the best he can bring to the table. And that's what we're training for. Now, uh, Jose's been through, a, a, I, I guess, a lot, you know, especially with getting shot in the leg. You know, he hasn't, it, it sucks because he had so much promise and then the leg thing happened and then he hasn't really been the same. And I, I feel like it, it's kind of handicapped him in a way, but he, he's still showing a ton of heart. With what he showed in the Crawford fights and the other fights, do you see anything there that you're like, kind of like, hmm, that's interesting. That that that's something I may not have seen, or or that's a, a different look that I haven't seen before. You know, I face a lot of fighters. I face a lot of styles. So you know, in the amateur, the pros, I spar different people. I wouldn't say is is anything different, but you, you just never know till you get in there. Maybe he does do something that's tricky and I have to adapt. But from what I've seen, there's nothing really that I've never seen before. Hmm. He is tall and rangy, though. That That's one thing I think that uh, could maybe be interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely a little bit taller than me, a little longer reach. So, But we've been sparring guys 6'1", 74-inch reach. And this is what we're comparing for. I would imagine, given how good you're feeling, are you putting... I don't want to say pressure, but an expectation of yourself to get a knockout in this fight. I don't want to put no pressure on myself. You know, I've been through that before. So I'm just going to go in there and have fun and do what I do best. I think you're alluding to what you were going through before then with, with that then, right? Yeah, definitely. You don't want to, you just want to go in there and have fun. Just have fun. Be Danny Garcia. Mm -hmm. and put your punches together. Use the jab. Hit them hard. Now, going back to that, Danny, um, was there ever like, did you ever think like, you know what, like, I'm just going to walk away like this is too much. I'm too burnt out. I don't want to come back. Like, I just want to enjoy life. No, I just I knew I needed a break. Mm. I knew I needed a break. I, ne I never felt like 
yo, I'm done with this. this is, it is a lot of work. You know, you got to be built different for this, mentally and physically, especially when you be at the top of the game for so long. Sometimes you, you need rest. It's only rest. You're only human, you feel me? So I knew that I wasn't done with it. I just knew I needed rest. Say you do achieve your goal and you become a three-division world champion and you end up being undisputed at 154. Have you thought, like, what, what happens next at all? Oh, let me set it off into the sunset. Yeah? There's nothing else to do after that. <laughs> that's it? You'd call it a day? Yeah. Wow. That's, that's the goal. That's, that's the, the goal. Day. Yeah? Yeah. Like, 110%, because I know how addicting this sport is. Like, you're not going to go and say, you know what, let's go to middleweight now. We're going to walk away healthy and a champion. I'm glad you're okay now, uh, that you're mentally, you're good. Uh, we all need a little bit rest here and there. And, and when we get that rest, I think mentally, you know, we're, we're, we're that much fired up and we could put 110% uh, back into it. And I just been seeing your energy in these videos and, and it's, it's obvious. Like you, you, I guess you have that mojo back, like that spark back. Right. Definitely. You've got to have, enjoy your life, enjoy your life. And, and then just do what you love. And just be positive every day. That's what I'm doing. But I don't know, man. If you become undisputed at 154, I don't know if you're going to sell to the sunset. I think maybe a four division champion might might sound good to you. A middleweight. Man, uh, we could. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities out there. Let me just handle business on July 30th, and then we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. All right, good stuff. That is Danny Garcia. He's fighting Jose Benavides. Junior uh, coming up at the Barclays on Showtime. Danny, as always, man, great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good stuff, Danny. Thank you so much for watching this video. And make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV. And give us a follow online as well at Fight Up TV on Twitter and on Instagram. We appreciate it, guys.